Hey everybody, this is Brother Paxton. I'm coming to you from Traverse City, Michigan today. And we are getting ready to do a brand new series. I thought I would uh, take the time to uh, share with you what we're going to be teaching about. It's only armor of God. So in Ephesians chapter 6, here's what the scripture says. Finally, my brethren, this is verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You have to start right at that premise. And it says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And if you'll view the armor of God from that foundation, you will understand, perhaps as never before, how God wants to utilize this armor in your life as a Christian. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And then he says again in verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now I want, I want you to read that like it's written, and read it like Paul would have communicated it. It says that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand, stand therefore. In other words, he's saying, once you've accomplished the placing of this armor, and in just a moment I'm going to talk to you about that briefly in this introductory clip, because you really don't place the armor. But once that armor is in place, now in order to stand against the wiles of the devil, just stand. Stand in faith and stand firmly. And then in verse 14, stand therefore having your loins, now here's the armor, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now notice this armor, the, uh, the loins girt about with truth, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness that protects your heart, uh, the helmet of salvation protecting your head, the shield of faith stopping the advance of the enemy. Every piece of this armor is a spiritual representation. Uh, you know, you've got people who want to get up every morning and symbolically go through putting on all this armor and hey, if that's your thing, knock yourself out. But really what this is, this is a representation of a believer in Christ. And so when we reckon, that's an accounting term, it means to uh, count it as a fact that we, because we're born again, are in Christ. We have on the armor. And the situation is, when you face a circumstance in your life, when you face a, a need, when you face an enemy, whatever the case might be, is you reckon yourself to be in Christ. You reckon yourself to be in Christ. It's a never-ending process, and what it's doing is you are just acknowledging the fact that you are in Christ, and He is our truth. That's the belt of truth. He is our, our breastplate of righteousness. It's His righteousness, not ours. Our righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. But when we reckon ourselves to be in Christ, and we, we have partaken of His imputed righteousness, it protects our heart. We can understand and we can know that we are right with God, not by anything we have done or are doing for the Lord or anything of that nature. We are right with God because of His righteousness. Also, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He is our peace. He is the gospel. Amen. So all of it goes back to who Jesus is. The shield of faith. What is that faith? That faith is acknowledging 
who we are in Christ because of what he did for us at the cross. We can quench the fiery darts of the wicked when Satan fires a dart at us that says, you're not enough, you're no good, you're not forgiven. All of these things that Satan will hurl at the believer and we hold out that shield of faith. Now it's not going to do you any good to go through some kind of mental gymnastic of you standing there with a shield out. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about you reckoning yourself to be in Christ. And so this armor, and as we're going to see when we get into this study, you've got the helmet of salvation to protect your mind. How do we think? We think according to the Word of God, yes. But here's, here's the thing about it. It says in connection with the helmet is the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. When does this book, I mean, this is a book, right? This isn't a sword, it's a book. When does this become the sword of the Spirit to me? When I have put on the armor. What is putting on the armor? Reckoning myself to be in Christ. And so when I'm, I've reckoned myself that I am in Christ, and Christ is in me, the hope of glory, and then I'm reading the Word because the Holy Spirit is prompting something to my heart that I will use in my spiritual battle with the enemy. And so that's when the Word becomes the sword of the Spirit to me. It's not necessarily just because I read the words on a page, now that's the sword of the Spirit. It is, but it really is ineffective until I am in that position of understanding that I am in Christ and that Christ is the one who is actually wielding this sword against my enemy. And what I do is I obey His promptings and he, He'll give me the verses that I need to hold in my heart and hold in my mind and speak with my mouth during the particular ordeal that I'm in. And so I obey the Holy Spirit and I learn the Word of God. And the Word of God renews me and the Word of God changes me. Why? because I have reckoned myself to be in Christ, and it is the sword of the Spirit. And then it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Again, three words, in the Spirit. And so how do we pray in the Spirit? Somebody said, well, that's when you pray in other tongues. Yes, but it's more than that. You can pray in the Spirit in English. It's more than simply praying in tongues. It is praying in the understanding that we are trusting Christ, that we are reckoning our, that we are in Christ, and Christ is in me, the hope of glory. And when we begin to pray, we begin to wield the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we begin to speak what God has said in His Word, then that Word becomes the sword. And that Word takes on power, and that Word changes situations in our lives. And so, the armor of God. It's very simple. It's, it's not a mysterious kind of thing. I heard one preacher say one time, it's simply God's clothes. And how do we get dressed in God's clothes? We reckon ourselves to be in Christ. And that's the starting point. Jesus is all our victory. And He wants to lead us eight steps of the way on a victorious path. And He will do that as we reckon ourselves to be in Him. And He is in us. And it's the divine entanglement. And it's the exchanged life. You see, because Jesus lives His life through us. Think about this as I close. Jesus is in here walking around. It sounds strange. But the Bible says that He is in us. He's living His life through us. Paul said, it's no longer I who live. But it's Christ who lives within me. We have reckoned ourselves to be crucified unto this world, to be dead to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the armor. That's clothing oneself in God's clothes. And that is how victories in life, in the spiritual battle arena that we find ourselves in as Christians, that's how victory is won. So I'm looking forward to this series. I pray that as many of you as possible will tune in and be with us in future programmings. This particular clip 
will probably be you know tucked in with some other teaching but this is coming the armor of God and we believe for thousands of people to be set free as the word of the Lord goes forth so from Traverse City Michigan this is evangelist Glenn Paxton saying go with God and he will go with you bless you